All right, guys, thanks for being at our camps. Uh, since we do have some high school kids here, this is some important information for you guys. Uh, working in the compliance office here at Oklahoma State, one thing that we oversee is what we call initial eligibility. So initial eligibility is how you become eligible as a college freshman to practice, receive a scholarship, and to compete. So when you're a sophomore, junior, and senior in college, you're, you become eligible based on what you've done in college, your grades in college, okay? But in order to be eligible as a freshman, it all depends on what you've done in high school. So when we talk about initial eligibility, becoming eligible as a freshman, there's, there's three things that you have to satisfy, okay? So the first thing that you have to do is you have to graduate on time from high school. What that means is eight semesters after you start high school as a ninth grader, you've got you've to graduate high school. So you, you just go through the regular timeline, you enter with your ninth grade class, and you graduate the spring of your senior year. Okay, so that one should be pretty easy. The second one uh, gets a little bit more complex. So throughout your high school career in your 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year, you've got to complete 16 core credits. Okay, so core credits are English, math, science, social science, foreign languages, uh, not classes like team sports or shop class or personal finance or, or things like that. So 16 core classes you have to complete. Um, and then we're going to look at your GPA from those 16 core classes. Uh, so we'll throw out the grades that, that, that don't count, so gym classes and, and, and classes that aren't considered core. We throw those out and then we calculate your GPA with those 16 core classes. And your GPA in those 16 core classes has to meet up with your ACT or SAT score on what the NCAA calls a sliding scale. So the, basically the way that that works is the higher your core GPA, the lower your ACT or SAT score needs to be, and then vice versa, the higher that your ACT and SAT score is, the lower that your core course uh, GPA has to be. Okay, so the way that the, the 16 core courses break down is you have to complete four years of English, so four full year credits of English, uh, which is pretty simple. You just want to make sure that you're in an English class at all times in high school. Uh, three years of math classes, so you actually do get a break, a one year break from math if you want to. Um, two years of natural or physical science, so that would be like your biology, chemistry, uh, physics, classes like that. Two years of social science. Social science is our, our social studies classes, so uh, government, econ, civics, western civ, history, things like that. And then the last category is you got to have four additional core credits, so they can be uh, English, math, or science, social science, or in that category we can add in foreign language. Okay, so for you ladies, now we have a new rule starting in 2016, and that's why it's so important to, to know these rules or just to kind of be aware of them and maybe talk with them with your parents or your guidance counselor at, 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 at school because now starting with uh, uh, student athletes that are ent entering college in 2016 and beyond, there's an extra criteria. And that extra criteria is just that you have to have 10 of those 16 core credits completed before your senior year starts. So the NCAA was seeing a lot of student athletes that were um, being recruited late in, their, late in their careers, maybe switching high schools and, and piling on a lot of core credits in their senior year. What we want to see at Oklahoma State and the NCAA wants to see is they want to see just a natural progression through high school. So you're taking core credits every semester, you're advancing from Algebra 1 to Algebra 2 to Geometry, things like that. Um, and so you've got to get 10 completed before your senior year starts. And of those 10 classes, seven of them have to be in English, math, or science, okay? So really important when you're talking about with your parents and your, the classes that you're in, always be in English, math, and science every semester in high school, and then you guys uh, will be okay. Does anyone have any questions on how any of that works? Okay, so we are mandated by the NCAA to touch on a few other uh, topics here, and so we've got to talk about amateurism, we've got to talk about gambling, and we've got to talk about drugs, okay? So. Amateurism, the, what, what amateurism means is that you're not a professional athlete. So to be eligible in college athletics, in every sport, you've got to be considered an, uh, an amateur, okay? So the, the main things to worry about this is what, as you guys progress through high school, um, and if you ever have the opportunity to accept money maybe from an AAU coach or an, you know, some sort of endorsement deal, or you, know, you become a really highly recruited athlete and someone wants you to wear a certain brand of shoes or something like that, all that kind of stuff is off limits if you want to play in college athletics, okay? Um, the other thing that we have to, 
the, the other things that we have to look out for are gambling, okay? And so you guys probably laugh a little bit at, at gambling because, uh, to be quite honest, none of you probably have any money to gamble. I tell our student athletes at Oklahoma State that they don't have any money to gamble. Um, but gambling is kind of a different thing to think about when you, when you really think about what the NCAA considers gambling. So the NCAA considers gambling uh, everything that you have to pay money to enter. So if you play in a fantasy football league, can't do it. If you play in like a Super Bowl checkerboard or uh, NCAA bracket pool, things like that where you fill out your bracket um, and, and you compete against other people, that kind of stuff's gambling. And if you want to play in college sports, you're not allowed to do that, okay? Um, as, as a fun way to do your brackets or, or a fantasy football league or a fantasy basketball league, um, just keep in mind that if you don't pay to enter, so ESPN.com or CBS Sports, they have all those competitions that are free to enter. You can fill out your bracket, enter them on ESPN.com for free, and then win a brand new car or college tuition or something like that. That kind of stuff's okay because you don't have to pay to enter, okay? So anytime you have to pay to enter or risk something of value, it's considered gambling. So just remember that. And with social media these days, um, and everyone kind of putting their whole lives on the internet for everyone to see, it is something that's pretty easy to find if you guys are participating in social, in, in uh, fantasy football or, or NCAA brackets, things like that. Um, the last thing is drugs, okay? So we got to talk a little bit about uh, the two types of drugs that the NCAA looks out for and the two types of drugs that Oklahoma State looks out for, and those are pr performance enhancing drugs, and then they're also the street drugs, okay? So, First of all, on street drugs, the, uh, the, the way that that works with the NCAA is that the first time that you get, that you test positive for a street drug, and what we mean by street drugs are things like marijuana, cocaine, you know, methamphetamines, things like that. So the first time you test positive for a street drug, you're going to be ineligible to compete for six months. Uh, obviously, what comes with that is probably a little public humiliation once um, people find out what, what went on with uh, um, the reason why you're sitting out from sports. And obviously, if you're going, if you're going to want to be an athlete in college or, or in high school, um, you know, drugs are obviously something that you guys want to stay away from. Um, you know, mentally with school, physically with, uh, with athletics, uh, the way that you interact with your family. I mean, I, th I think we can all agree that drugs are not a good thing um, uh, for anyone, especially young athletes. The second thing is performance enhancing drugs, okay? The NCAA has a very extensive list of performance enhancing drugs. Uh, you, can get perform you, you can get dinged on a performance enhancing test from things as such as drinking too much Red Bull, okay? Now it's drinking a lot of Red Bull, but you just have to be really careful about what you guys put into your bodies because things that you can buy over the counter from GNC or, um, you know, these fitness stores that pop up that, that sell, you know, nutritional items, a lot of their stuff is banned by the NCAA, okay? And, and the NCAA has some really strict penalties for um, for when you test positive for performance enhancing drugs. Uh, different high school districts handle it different with uh, drug testing and things like that for, uh, for you ladies, but in the NCAA, if you test positive for a performance enhancing drugs, you're ineligible for, your, for one year of competition. You have to sit out. That year of competition also docks you as season used. And then the second time you test positive for performance enhancing drugs, you're done playing college sports in all levels and in, in every sport. So it's a really serious thing to think about and I just want to encourage you guys to make sure that you speak with your parents before putting anything uh, that you're unsure of into your bodies or taking anything after a workout, any type of supplements, pills, powders, anything like that. I want to make sure that you guys uh, speak with your trainers at your high school, speak with your parents and just make sure that you're being safe because a lot of these things are brand new. Um, there's not a, a ton of research on, on how they affect you 20, 30, 40 years down the road in your lives, and so make sure that you guys are careful um, with what you're putting into your bodies. Do you guys have any questions on anything I covered? Uh, we do have a compliance webpage. It's just on okstate.com. You guys can find us. If you or your parents have any questions on academics or anything that I've covered, uh, by all means, give me a phone call, email me, and, and, and because you guys come to our camps, we definitely want to serve as a resource for you guys and answer any questions that you have, okay? All right, well thank you uh thank you for listening and get some shots up today.